experience an anxiety uh, increase as I was thinking that I would have to stand before you. And I asked my wife, Peggy, uh, if she had to speak to a group like you, what would she say? And she, she didn't hesitate. She knew exactly what she would say. She said, you've got to tell them how important their spouses and families are. <laughs> now, now, someday I hope that you will all get to meet Peggy. She is uh, one incredible woman. In uh, the creation story, when God created all of the animals and then man, the first act of creation that he said wasn't good was when he looked at man and he was alone. And he said, it's not good that man be alone. And so he brought all the animals in front of him, and none of that worked out. <laughs> and he was so tired, he went into a sleep. And during that time, uh, God did some surgery. And, and when Adam woke up, uh, there was a woman standing there. And the, the living Bible said, Adam explained, this is it. <laughs> well, Peggy is it. I mean, she's a kind of a perfect mate. Kind of an outgoing, gregarious, warm. What? <laughs> excited and we went to Atlanta to begin a ministry and share that together and in those early days she began to work with young ladies as I began to work with young men but as the babies came along uh, she was more and more uh, consumed with raising them and God made it possible for her to stay in the home and so she gave full time to mothering she said her call was being a mother she was a good mother. But what started together as a team effort began to undergo a gradual change as her world started to get a little bit smaller and uh, her, her environment shrunk a little bit. Mine was growing. She was talking baby talk and changing diapers and I was out taking on the systems of the world. Her ego was uh, not getting stroked very much, but I was getting a lot of attention. I was becoming successful in my calling, but the success of her calling was causing her to somehow be diminished as a person. I became somehow convinced that my calling was more important than hers. And Peggy became the negotiable item in my schedule. So that when other needs called out, when a kid was in trouble and I needed to go, uh, Peggy could be rearranged. And when businessmen wanted me to come and speak at their social clubs and Sunday school classes and uh, when donors wanted uh, me to drop what I was doing, it was easy to erase Peggy out of the schedule book. We will do that later, honey. And what happened was that Peggy began to feel devalued. I said that I preached with some real conviction that my priority for God, my wife and family, and my work in that order. Peggy knew a different reality. She knew that my real priorities were my work. And we didn't call it work then, we called it the call, the ministry. And I'm not sure where God quite fit in in that priority, but Peggy was clear that she was last. Now the bind that that set up for her was that she began to see the 
ministry the call like the other women in my life. It became my mistress, the, the place that I invested most of my energies, my best energies, the place that I invested all of my creativity. And she became jealous. But because she was a sensitive, caring, spiritual person, she couldn't really admit that jealousy. That was, that was a shameful thing. How could she be jealous of what God was wanting me to do? Somehow in that package, I was, my work or my call was all tied up with my obedience to God, and so to be jealous of my work was in effect to be jealous of God. And that put her in a position that she couldn't talk about to anybody. She was too ashamed of that to mention it to herself, let alone to other people. So my devotion to my call set her up for not only spiritual separation from God, but guilt inside the inability to communicate to, any, to anybody about that. Very angry. Finally, in the 15th year of our married life, something like a volcano exploded. It was a mixture of outrage and hurt that exploded in hot rage was something that she couldn't contain any longer. And, and the fear was that she'd lose her soul and she'd lose her marriage. But the reality was that she was dying inside. And if she didn't explode, she would die. Most of those waves of anger and rage and like hot love coming out of the volcano. Most of them came on me, but anybody that got in the way. And I couldn't ignore it. I thought that it would be over after the major explosion, but the reality was that was just the beginning. And for two years, the hurt that had been packed down underneath the surface and concealed from daylight came spewing out. It took 15 years to build up. And I got tired of it. I thought it was one of those passing things we had always been able to resolve fights before. But it wasn't. It was calling for fundamental changes in me. And it would be satisfied with nothing else than for me to re rearrange my priorities. Peggy had a fear that if the truth were known, if I were put to a choice between her and my ministry, her fear was that I would choose my ministry. Of course, I always denied that. But in this process, I got in touch with that. And she might be right. And that was a bad thing for me to have to face. I declared up and down that it wasn't true. But inside, I think, I don't really know. What I was calling my call was a spiritual sounding word for empire building. The same kind of things that were going on with our successful business friends that wives got together and talked about that the husbands were always gone, workaholics going after the American dream, spending all their time building their empires, we shake our heads. We ought not do that. But the fact of the matter was that my calling was in fact empire building. And because of that, I devalued my life. And I neglected my life, my life in the name of God. The result of now four years of uh, explosions that eventually ended into 
very heated and pointed discussions, and now clear, crisp dialogue enabled me to <laughs> rearrange my priorities. <coughs> Peggy and the Holy Spirit have done some reshaping of my theology. And I want to give you four short, concise statements that God and Peggy have taught me over the last four years. One conclusion is this. My call is never in conflict with my prior commitment to love my wife as Christ loved the church. Second thing that I have been taught through this experience. That my wife's call to a ministry of motherhood is at least as important as my call to work with the poor in the inner city. And that I must give at least as much affirmation, attention, and energy to support her call as she gives to me in support of mine. Conclusion three, that loving the ministry is not the same as loving God. In fact, ministry can become the very activity that keeps me so busy that I don't have time to know the heart of God. Conclusion four, four. The need does not constitute the call. There are many needs Woo. that cry out, Woo. many needs that I want to respond to, but I cannot meet all the needs that my heart wants to draw me toward. As a matter of fact, if I let the pressing needs that I see around me dictate my life, I will probably not get around to the most important things. A call requires listening, quietness, and getting to know the heart, the God who has placed that call inside of me. And, I, and if I am running around being dictated by needs, I won't have energy left or time in my schedule be alone with the God who is called. Yeah. I think that the city needs visionary leaders. But Peggy believes that pe perhaps a greater need in the city is for loving husband and wife relationships 